Hello, everybody. This is Hao Ming, Jason, Tony, and Vicky. And today we're going to talk about enzymes and substrates. Okay, in order to understand the enzymes and substrates, you first need to know the lock and key analogy. Lock is sort of the enzyme, and substrate is sort of like the key. Just like a lock and a key, only certain substrates stick to certain enzymes and only certain enzymes stick to certain substrates. Here in this activity, students are trying to match the right enzyme with the correct substrate. With lock and key model in mind, let's look at the chemical reaction of the breakdown of sugar. Although this chemical formula may seem difficult, all it is is that sugar break into two parts, which is ethanol, which are in beverages, and carbon dioxide, often from exhaust or just our breathing. Now here, enzyme acts as a catalyst of the reaction. Catalyst is a substance that just speeds up the reaction. Today we will examine how substrate concentration, in this case sugar, will affect the rate of reaction of the formula. Usually the relationship between concentration of substrate and rate of reaction is linear. What that means is that it's directly proportional, which means that it goes, as substrate concentration goes up, the rate of reaction goes up. But why does it slow down at the end? Okay, so we're gonna bring up another analogy of the fat man in the kitchen. Okay, think of the fat man as the enzyme and all the food around the kitchen, uh, the substrate. Although there is a lot of food around the person, the person cannot finish the food right away. He only has one mouth, therefore he has to take his time to eat all those food. That explains why it's linear. Okay, so the reason why it slows down at the end is because after the fat man starts to eat all those food, there's going to be leftovers, in this case, the ethanol. Okay, so the reason why the rate of reaction tends to decrease is because as the fat man in the kitchen eats all the food in the kitchen, he also produces a lot of waste, in this case, the ethanol. All the food there is sugar, just keep that in mind, okay? And as he consumes all the food, uh, there's gonna be a lot of leftovers, and the leftovers get in the way of finding the right food. As the leftover and waste get in the way of finding the right food for the fat man, and the fat man takes time to find the right food to consume, and that's why it takes a longer time for him to find the right food, and that's why the reaction tends to slow down at the end. So okay, now we're gonna conduct an experiment that shows the understanding of enzymes. So what we're gonna do is say, okay, so this is the yeast, right? The enzyme. So this is like the Pac-Man, and this is the sugar, the smaller one. So the Pac-Man or the enzymes will break down the smaller molecules, and in the end, it will produce carbon dioxide. So we're gonna conduct an experiment that shows that. So will you guys please come over here. I know it looks complicated, but it's actually not that complicated. So what we're gonna do is gonna we're gonna dissolve sugar, and then we're gonna put and then we're gonna put yeast in one bottle. So in the bottle with yeast, carbon dioxide is gonna get produced because enzymes are present, and the, and in the other bottle we're not gonna have any enzymes or yeast. It's out of the bottle. No, it's not. It's me. Okay, so in the other bottle, we're not going to have any enzymes, so carbon dioxide is not going to get produced, so... Okay, let's start our experiment, so... It just turns out very easy. Can you put 20 grams of sugar into this thing? How do you know my name? I just know this. Wait, wait, wait. It just turns out. Wait, so can you it's put 50? Is gonna zero it? I think so. This this is our problem. Yeah. It's okay, let's just pretend it's fine. Yeah. No, I think it's okay. How about we measure just just by teaspoons, huh? Oh, it's okay. Just... Okay, it doesn't have to be It's a Tony, it's science. And then can you put, can you put, uh, two teaspoons? No. 
We're gonna use this thing called sensor. We're gonna put it into the bottle and it's gonna measure how much carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide molecules are present in the bottle. So we're gonna measure the enzyme. But no, no, why do I have to use it? Does someone wanna put it in here? <laughs> no, actually, uh, we have to. Cindy wants to. Really? <laughs> Cindy, where were you? Let's just put it in to cover the, the, the surface. Close it. Uh, can you open this? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's good enough. And then shake it. Shake it. Uh, where's that other? Where's another bottle? There's only one. There's two. But can you shake it for 10, ten seconds? Ten seconds. Come on, Sean. One, two, three, four, seven, 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 two. That was ten. Uh, ten seconds. And then. Stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we're gonna put the sensors to measure how much carbon dioxide is present in the bottle. Wait. So what's the thing we're changing here, guys? Huh? What's the thing we're changing here? Warm water. We are, we're changing the sugar concentration. So one, remember how we put two teaspoons and one we put four teaspoons, right? Okay, the reason, if you look at it right here, we'll see one yeah, at the top here. and one at the bottom. The reason why this is at the top is because, because the, the difference in this one and this one, the sensors are sort of different. So they're not, they don't measure exactly how it is, but if you see the, the trend of the graph, it's very similar, okay? And that's the end of the experiment. Uh, do you guys have any questions or concerns? Wait, so the so the different sugar did not have an effect? They don't have an effect. Ah, because there's a fat man in the kitchen. Exactly. Yes. No matter how fat he is, no matter how much food how much there is. Yes. Ah, got that. Yes. Very informative, thank you. 